A common question in the Nilu communities is newer players coming in and asking, why are all these regular players and even speedrunners using Kole? Or even, why are we playing Double Dendro in general? And this might be because the mainstream advice may tell them that specific teams are meta, like, like Triple Hydro. And in regards to Kole, there's information put out that she isn't very good. And in terms of coverage, there seems to be a lot more theory crafting and guides focused on these other sort of teams. But when you actually look at what the Nilu communities and top players are playing, relatively, it isn't matching up and newer players are confused. So as someone who's both in TC and casual communities a lot, and I do speed running across multiple patches with Nilu teams, I'm going to try and share my perspective and insight. Oh yeah, before I start, I recently made this 58 page in-depth Kokomi guide, which does have a lot of detail on Nilu Bloom teams and builds, almost everything I know about her. Some of you might already know about this master doc, but I'll put the link in the pinned comment. The first thing I have to say is, Nilu especially is one of those characters where, no offence, but you kind of just have to ignore a lot of the theory crafting and ignore the spreadsheets. Actually, even rotations, don't take them too seriously. Just learn different setups. You see, as you might have experienced, Nidu Bloom teams are all about adapting and reacting to the situation. Someone might make calculations versus one enemy, but how about two or three enemies? How about if those two or three enemies are slightly spread out and walk towards you at different times? Something like Nilu's ring will apply Hydro to any enemy as they come within range. Your characters might be applying Dendro or Hydro in different orders each time you try a chamber. It will not be the same every time. This is what you can call infinite variables. It means when you use Nilu Bloom, fights have infinite variables you have to adapt. Therefore, you cannot theorycraft a set of assumptions and hypotheticals effectively. You can consider Neo Bloom the new team on the block, like International. With International, you can find all sorts of maths that make it look bad, or you can find maths that say Fischl or Sucrose can be higher DPS. Just like you can find theoreticals that say Kole has bad ICD and Traveller or Yelan or Xingqiu is an upgrade. None of this matters. So there's a reason why it's smart to always take Nilu math with a grain of salt. Probably the biggest grains in the entire game. So how does Kole fit into all this? Simply put, she has great adaptability, flexibility and front load. Remember, these teams have no Animo grouper, so positioning is key. And that's one of the first reasons why Kole works so well here. Her skill is flexible and can move with the player. Look at a scenario like this. Let's say I defeat these husks. New enemies are spawning far away on the other side of the map. You can take Kole's portable skill over and continue creating blooms. Her skill and burst are also on short cooldowns that can easily be recasted in this new position. Sackbow is also really popular on her and it gives you even more flexibility. This is important because remember, Nahida needs another character to apply Dendro so she can herself reapply Dendro with her own skill. Now if we take Traveller on the other hand, yes his burst does last a long time. Traveller is nice for casual play, it has a burst that you set and forget. However, when the next enemies spawn, they can be out of his burst range. And his skill isn't damaged over time, it's one and done. Meaning I would have to wait to recast another burst. In fact, that's another difference because Kale sometimes doesn't even need to burst. You can use her skill for one phase and then skill and burst for the next. Everything is an off-field dot which is helpful. And all this adds up to affect DPS in the abyss. Now on the other hand, back to the start of the video, a lot of people may want to play Triple Hydro and a character like Xingqiu or Yelan do have portable flexible bursts. However, a lot of people have noticed the compositions themselves are not that flexible. You may have noticed this already, but Triple Hydro team's damage is very concentrated when Nahida is on the field normal attacking. 
and when you swap off her to refresh teammate stuff or or even swapping off her because you might be low on HP the team's dendro core and blue production will noticeably slow down or even stop because there's no dendro source to keep Nahida's skill activating. Now usually in Genshin teams prefer concentrated front loaded damage versus sustained constant hits however why this doesn't feel right in Nilu teams is because the hits in Triple Hydra aren't exactly doing higher front loaded damage. The Bloom hits are going to be 30 to 35k, same as Double Dendro. This is why Double Dendro can feel stronger in practice because simply put, it gets more Blooms and the Blooms don't stop. Actually, maybe Kole is just the new Kudra Sara. You can find reviews that say they're bad, say they're clunky. You can even find DPS calcs that say replacing them with other characters is higher DPS. But there's clearly a reason that all these Raiden, Kerching, and Nidu players are playing them. This is Kole's other key strength, but I think this one is a lot more well known by now. Her Boomerang, Sprout, and C6 if you have it, all add up to a lot of Dendro application in a short amount of time. And as you know, more elemental application can up the Dendro core production rate. When you play the team, you can easily notice and feel big spikes in team damage when Kole is on the field using her abilities. A common setup might go Kole burst skill to Kokomi burst. This is the team's peak damage window, especially if Kokomi has Ocean Huge Clam too. Kole's Dendro application here is huge for speedrunning and I know you guys know by now the strength of front loaded damage. Now having said all this, although Kole was given twice for free, meaning free Constellation 1, she isn't as free as Traveller. Traveller's Constellations and Ascension mats are given for free as you progress through the story, meaning you don't really need to spend resin on him, just books and Mora. Whereas Kole, like other normal characters, does need resin on boss mats and annoyingly you do need to spend a lot of time farming these mushrooms. And she has really great constellations, C2, C4 and C6 are all very strong. I'm still on C2 myself. Unfortunately, she's been on these banners which I imagine many people have skipped. So Kole does require more investment which is somewhat of a valid concern. Now away from Bloom teams, Kole's other popular use is aggravate teams, mostly Kaching and Yayamiko stuff. Although since Nahida's release, Nahida is much more common in this spot. But Kole still does have some advantages here and it's why she still sees some use in some lower budget speedruns. First of all, if you have Kole at C4 and Elegy for the end, you might notice that together with instructors, she actually provides 60, 120, 100, so 280 EM, which is actually a bigger buff than Nahida does. Obviously, not everyone may have Elegy. However, the other thing with this EM is that it's for the whole team compared to Nahida just buffing the on-field character. Now, once you factor in that everyone can exploit this EM well, Kerching, Yaimiko, Fischl, Sara, especially Kazuha whose damage will skyrocket and his buffs will increase by like 11%, that's all pretty big. Altogether, if your main DPS and Kazuha are well invested, using Kole with this build can help make up losing Nahida's strength and personal damage. The other factor and strength of Kole in these teams is actually the floor with Nahida, which is of course that Nahida needs to reapply her skill with each wave of enemies. This one isn't a unique strength of Kole since Traveller has this advantage too, but if you look at the first chamber of floor 12 for example, with all these spawning wolves it can be advantageous that Kole doesn't need to constantly reapply her stuff. Hopefully this video was helpful, personally I do recommend saving up to try snipe some of her constellations next time she's on a banner. That's something I'm going to do since I'm still only at C2 but even then, the fact that I've still been using her at C2 and getting all that gameplay and I'm missing her EM buff here and extra dendro app here just shows you how good she is. Now I just have to hope she comes with a 5 star character I want.